Hello, today is a very important day for me and my Suzuki car right here. I've owned this for two years now. So this is kind of like my little backstory with this car and a two year update on what's going on here. Let's start from the beginning. I've always been a car guy, or at least if you can consider it that up until this point where the madness kind of devolved. But anyways, I've always been a car guy and I've had fun cars like a 2016 Mustang GT convertible. I've had a 2017 F-150 Raptor. I've had a 65 Mustang, G uh, not a GT, sorry, Coupe. Just a 289 V8 four speed. Uh, what else have I had? I've had a Taurus SHO, a 94 a second gen. Uh, it was a, it was a turd. So back to the car guy thing. I was doing stuff like cold air intakes. Uh, I, I've had tunes, like just the stuff you could buy. And then it was like a plug and play tune, like a remote tune thing. Um, I've also had, what are they? Oh, 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 I've done wheels. Uh, I've done little like suspension mods, like new springs or, or yeah, yeah, upgraded sway bars. I don't know, little things like that where anybody could just do, like basic bitch car stuff. <laughs> Anyways, this is the car that has brought me down the path of being a true car guy, not just a basic bitch car guy. In October 2020, in the thick of the Rona pandemic, I was browsing like eBay Motors, I was browsing cars and bids, and uh, what else? Bring a trailer. I was on there all the time. Like every day, I just kind of browsed what was going on, like what the current auctions were. I wasn't planning on buying a car. I was just browsing just to see what was around. And then one day in October, I saw this car right here. This is the exact car, the exact auction I saw. And I didn't know what the heck this thing was. I didn't know what an AutoZam was. I've never seen this thing before. I had no idea, but something clicked in my mind and I've had this massive urge of, I don't care what this is, but I want it. And oh man, that's where everything spiraled out of control. So. I set myself a mental budget where it's like, okay, I, I don't know what these things go for, but I will pay up to X amount of dollars. That X amount was $14,000 and I kept bidding on it. So as the auction went on for like days, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't do anything. My mind was just stuck on, I need this. I want this. I saw this car. I watched all the videos on it uh, that were available on the listing. I watched uh, as much stuff as I could find on YouTube at the time. Uh, I watched and read as much stuff as possible. Everything. Hours and hours and nights and nights. Ooh. So the auction goes on and we get past $14,000. And now I'm just like, no, don't be stupid. And I kept bidding and I kept bidding. <laughs> And we got to the point where I was a little bit over 18,000 something. And, and then I was just like, you know, I can't, I shouldn't do this. I, I don't need a car, I don't need anything. I don't care that it's local. Look, it has a Massachusetts license plate on it. I couldn't do it. I stopped bidding and I thought that was the end of it. And it was over. So I lost. Um, I joined the Facebook group for the AZ1 and the Cara. And uh, turns out that other guy that just bought it also joined the group and I was able to contact him and I asked, hey, just curious, how much further were you willing to go? And he says, oh, that was my last bid. And I was like kicking myself where I didn't bid one more because what, the last 10 bids were, oh, just one more, just one more. I think for the next week or two, I just couldn't sleep because I couldn't like get over myself where I didn't bid one more time. And I let that slip out of my hands. The thing was local. It was in like Concord, Mass. What's that, like 30, 40 minutes away from my house here? So then I couldn't sleep. I couldn't focus. I couldn't do anything again. And all I knew was, how do I get another one? How do I get another one? That's all I could think of. And, you know, luck would have it. A Suzuki Cara shows up on Cars and Bids, like literally a week later. And I was like, oh, man, here's my second chance. Now, this one's in Pittsburgh. So I didn't know what I was gonna do if I did win it. Like, do I pay to have it shipped over? I've never done anything like that. And I'm like, do I drive my truck down and go rent a trailer and pick it up? I don't know, I had no idea. Except by this point, I've read about the car more and I understand some issues. So like I understood, okay, the AC is probably a problem and repairing it is not so easy. I'm not familiar with ACs. And I figured, okay, I won't pay more than 16,000 because the AC doesn't work. All right, so this one, I had a little bit more control over myself. I bid the thing up to about 16,000 and then I cut the cord. I was like, okay, no more. Because I found a place called Duncan Imports and at Duncan Imports, they had a bunch of them listed. Um, they no longer do, they have like two at a time now. But at the time there was like, I don't know, eight, nine maybe. 
Um, and then they also had about three Suzuki Karas. And just because I was still looking for an AutoZam, I was just scrolling at the top of their list. I was just being nosy just to see what else was in their inventory. And I scrolled all the way down and whoa, they had Suzuki Karas too. I had one of the AZ1s um, sent out to one of the local shops for them to like kind of check it over and then report back to me like what the problems and faults may be. Um, they told me about this AutoZam. What really got me was if you squeeze the spoiler, it would spray water at the window and amongst a host of other issues. And I was just like, eh, I didn't want that. But then I looked at the Suzuki car because I was being nosy and I scrolled all the way down um, and I sent one of the cars out. The car was in much better shape for actually less money than that AutoZam that I had sent out, the one I wanted. So I ended up buying the Suzuki Kara. I bought it for $17,999 about two years ago. No, exactly two years ago, eh, a little bit over. This is my largest purchase online ever. I was kind of sketched out that I have to wire these people money and then maybe they'll get, the, get me a car that was in relatively whatever shape as described. I don't know. People do this stuff all the time. I've never done it. This was my first time. It was a little bit, I was on edge already. So it was, it was tough. So I did that process was very smooth. They got me in contact with somebody that they recommend to help like to figure out shipping transport and whatnot. It worked out because the car was shipped up in an enclosed trailer. The truck driver was actually local here. I think he said he lives in like Weymouth or something and he happened to be on his return trip up and it was easy for him to detour a little bit in Virginia to go pick up my car and bring it up here. And then he met me in an open area where he can actually park his truck. Uh, I wanted him to bring it to my house, but it just seemed unreasonable to bring this giant truck down my street. Uh, giant trucks tend to get stuck here. So here it is, it's being unloaded and I'm so excited. Like I've never seen this thing before. I literally bought this thing basically sight unseen with no knowledge, uh, but I had a good time. First time in a right-hand drive car. You can open the door higher. <laughs> That's the only window you get. Yeah, it's a little uh, nook window. Just seeing the face of this car brought me so much joy. And, and I'm actually glad it actually brought me relief from the madness of, I want this car, I need to have it. And finally I could rest or or did I think I could rest? I don't know. I'm not sure if I've rested. I've still been all over the place, <laughs> just in a different way. So let's get into what I've done with this car over the last two years by adding up all the money I've spent on this guy. Oh man, <laughs> let's get started. This is most of my receipts. There's probably like this much more that's missing for some reason. I don't know what happened to it. However, I put it all together so I should be able to go through everything. I feel like I'm still missing a few things here and there, but this should be nearly 99% of all my spending of this car. I'm gonna go over everything I've spent directly because of this car, not counting the purchase price, not counting insurance, not counting gas. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. So the, the basic stuff we're not counting. Only extra money I've spent just because I wanted something or I'm doing something with the car. A lot of this stuff comes from Japan. You gotta pay like commission, you gotta pay for shipping and all kinds of stuff and then eventually it shows up at your door. So whatever I'm saying I paid for it is the final landed price at my door. First thing, when I first got the car, the door trim moldings, they were, they were cosmetic but they don't fit properly and they were just kind of wobbly, like hanging out in the wells. So it would rub against the body panels if you close the door and you have to like shove them in every time. And that was really annoying. And I wanted to fix this. So I went online, I looked at all the stuff. I was still able to get them and they were $470 landed at my door. Next, I thought my car looked a little bit bare without its wing. The Mazda Speed AZ1 versions all had a Mazda Speed wing and I thought that looked pretty good. I wanted a wing. 
blah, 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 blah. I bought stuff, a wing. I bought a silicone hose kit because I wanted to overhaul my cooling system. I bought uh, the, the, the strut mounts for the little donuts for my struts in case like I needed those. I don't know because I didn't even know what I was doing at the time. So I got all that stuff and it cost me $1,000. At some point, I decided I wanted to document all this stuff for myself and for anybody that was interested in one of these cars, hence what we're doing here now. Then I started tearing my car open to make sure everything was good, and guess what? I found rust. I found rust on my floors here, and as I kind of brushed away at it, it started getting worse. Oh, what a better time to pick up welding, right? So I, I have no experience welding. I have a couple friends that weld, like they do exhaust stuff and I asked them for some help and they came over and taught me some stuff. So then I just bought welding equipment. <laughs> I didn't research stuff, I was like, oh yeah, the machine costs like 300 bucks, I won't buy a fancy one, all I need to do is fix my floor. Oh, well, next thing you know, I am $848 into a welder and welding supplies, plus $257 for like a welding table and a welding cart so all my stuff could be together. <laughs> Next up, I bought the Torque Solutions shifter bushing kit because, you know, that's a thing you do. You replace the little rotten rubber bushings that are in the car so you can firm up your shifts. That cost me $46. At some point, Andy at Ultimark out in the UK, he had stainless bolts remade so they would match the exact body bolts that hold with the little washer. Uh, all the body panels are held down by these bolts. And here's a picture of it if you want to see it. Uh, but I bought a set of these because you're like, oh, I, mine are kind of rusty here and there. I would like to have a new set. And those cost me $91. I then also had to pick up tools. And you know, throughout this list, there may be tools and more just like replacement parts. So tools, I got like hose pick for the silicone kit and those were $33. Next, I got my wing painted and that cost me $425. Yeah. As I was fumbling with the cooling system, I had the coolant expansion tank out and I butterfingered it and I dropped the thing. It dented the rim where the cap goes on and I was devastated. Uh, <laughs> it was horrible. So I tried to fix it, I kind of made it work. It seemed like it was okay and it seemed like it was holding pressure but I was always paranoid and it always seemed like it was leaking a little bit. So luckily I was able to buy a new expansion tank at the time. So I bought a new expansion tank. I might as well pick up a gas cap, a brand new gas cap and uh, like the intake rubber tube because mine was starting to crack. You know, at this point I started understanding, okay, if I send stuff from Japan, I need to make the most of the shipping so I don't waste money. <laughs> that cost me $400. Next, I started buying more things for my welding project. I was buying like flap discs, grinder wheels, cutoff wheels, anything. $138 in that stuff. I also bought auto body hammers because they had like flat and like molding anvils, whatever. I had that stuff in case the floor pan like uh, warped a little bit and I could just kind of mash the thing back flat, something like that. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. The auto body hammers were $42. Next, I bought a welding jacket that was $37. I bought more flap discs because I ran out and that was $49. As I went around my car, I noticed somebody poorly resprayed my car. They poorly taped over the decals instead of removing them all together and then just sprayed it. There's overspray and random things and the decals are essentially ruined. It just doesn't look good up close. It looks great from like five, 10 feet away. So I found out the Cara decal is, uh, is kind of rare, but it was still available new. So I bought a Cara decal. I also bought some of uh, those push clips that are in the interior, the little pop rivets and all kinds of stuff. That cost me $98. I then started looking at more mods because you know, this is what happens. This is how this ruins your life. I learned about Autogiano and I started browsing their websites. Uh, you get used to all these weird Japanese websites and, and you have to use Chrome to translate and hope you get to figure everything out with the poorly translated stuff. But it's nice that they have pictures and it's really helpful to make you buy stuff. So I bought Autogiano triple gauge pods for the A pillar because you know, that looked cool. I wanted that. Uh, more basic bitch stuff. Anyways, I also got the handbrake cover that covers up the carpeted section for the handbrake so it looks nice now. Um, I also got another shifter bushing set just to check it out from Navic. Uh, it was just a 3D printed part. It was like a two piece section. I don't think it was worth like the 58 something dollars I paid for it before even shipping a commission. So yeah, it is what it is. You know, you spend money, you find out that it wasn't worthwhile. It happens all the time. That cost me $281. 
Next, I bought some speakers because my left speaker was not working. I bought a whole bunch of speakers. I was able to return most of them except for this set. So this set cost me $86 and it didn't fit. I don't know if you can see it from over there, but my two mirrors are kind of faded and the driver's side, like the little rubber boot on the bendy joint is a little bit torn. They don't sell that little rubber boot separately. You have to buy the whole mirror. I ended up buying a whole set of mirrors and it cost me $374. Next, my AC was making a weird noise. It sounded like a supercharger and it was probably the compressor going bad. Uh, I brought it to a few AC people and they looked at it and like, oh, it works, it should be fine. It just sometimes makes a noise, but you know, they probably didn't wear, wanna work on this. So they just kind of sent me on my way. And eventually the AC compressor failed. It's now leaking like out of the body of the thing. So that I was able to buy a new one for Suzuki Wagon R and that cost $100. Without the AC, this fish bowl gets really hot. So I started looking into alternatives until I get my AC fixed and I thought of ceramic tint. Uh, when I was getting the car aligned, alignment cost me $225 by the way. Uh, when I was getting in the line, they also did tint and they had the little thing up where they show you like all oh, the difference between tint and how the heat comes by with the heat lamp and stuff. And I was sold on the ceramic tint. I was able to get that done and that was $600. Next, I saw this RHB 31 FW Monster Sport Turbo. It's brand new and I figured, oh man, that's rare. I should get that for my plans later on. And I paid way too much money for this thing, I think. I can't find the receipt for it for some reason, but I vaguely remember it costing me $1,321, something like that. And this is where my ambitions started. I wanted to drop my motor and do like a whole reseal, a whole overhaul, so that way I could shove it back in and have full confidence in the car without worrying about like blowing out a seal or something and losing oil everywhere and ruining my motor. Yeah, valid. So I made the largest order I've ever made and I bought a whole bunch of stuff from Monster Sport. I bought the reinforced timing belt, I bought the engine mount, I bought the metal intake gasket, the metal exhaust gasket, the water temp uh, T so I can have a sensor uh, go in for my gauges, uh, the oil sandwich plate also for sensors and the gauges, uh, the thermostat, the sport thermostat, I forget what temperature that thing is. Um, what else did I buy? I also bought the windshield molding for this guy and I saw coilovers. Why not? It was a bit floaty when it was stuck, so I bought a set of Navic Street coilovers. That sent me back $2,338. Next, back to my basic bitch self, I started looking into wheels. Um, there's nothing wrong with my wheels. I just wanted these wheels. They were TE37s. I wasn't familiar with what they really were. Uh, I wasn't familiar with like the hype behind them because I wasn't really a Japanese or JDM car guy thing. Apparently this is like a Japanese thing. Um, but my first, <laughs> I jumped right into a right hand drive actual JDM car and a weird one at that. But I picked myself up a 14 by five uh, plus 38 offset TE37 set of white wheels. The things were like mint. They had all the original stickers. They have everything other than one of the raised decals were a little bit kind of messed up and I could buy a decal and fix that. That's not a problem. They still sell those. That sent me back $1,847. I then had to buy new tires for my new TE37s. I needed to buy front tires. I needed to buy rear tires. These are not tire sizes you can buy in the US very easily. What I ended up doing was buying tires from Japan for the fronts because they're 165, 55, 14 and that's a really small size you can't really buy here. There are some tires you can get like Federals, you can get Achilles I think, um, but I didn't want those. So I bought Yokohama Advans and uh, this is what my result. That cost me $410 just for the front tires. I started shopping around for the rear tires in the US because there was a little bit more leeway to be a little bit bigger if I needed to, because you're not turning the wheels and theoretically it's not gonna rub the wheel wells. So I thought. I went to 185, 55, 14s in the rear. Now I have a staggered setup. There were also Yokohama Advans, different models, but it's close enough that it'll work. Those fit just right. They look real fat, like the sidewalls, like bulging out on, the, on these five inch wide wheels, but um, it worked. The only problem was with the Navy coilovers I bought, it lowered the car enough where the 185s were now kind of a problem. Under certain conditions it would rub, but it is what it is. I'm trying to figure that out. Maybe I'll buy a smaller size just to not have that problem anymore. But those rear tires cost me $324. They effectively saved me 70 bucks roughly, $70. And I have tire rub. 
but they look pretty cool. I've now had the car up and down on my lift a few times now, and I've noticed a few things. Car runs a bit hot in the summer, especially with the AC on uh, when it did work. My radiator scoop was a little bit messed up, and I happened to see one for sale. I bought that, it cost me $208. Next I bought some exhaust hangers and they cost me $11 because I bought a new exhaust. Why? Because I like dual tips instead of the little trumpet from my tuba exhaust that I had. I got this super rare Suzuki Sport muffler. It's basically the Mazda Speed one, but this one has the Suzuki Sport plate along with like matching paperwork with the serial number. I don't know, I'm a sucker for that stuff. I bought it because it was rare. That exhaust cost me about $1,560. I also started picking up like gaskets because I figured I have to switch my exhaust. The gasket will probably be ruined. So I bought two muffler gaskets. That was $33. I'm not even halfway through this list yet. And it's, I'm only two years into this madness. I think it's starting to tone down because I think I've bought everything I could possibly buy, but let's carry on. I bought a little AutoZam AZ1 cute little pin. I bought a short throw shifter for the car. I also had to buy a shifter core for the short throw shifter because the seller wanted a core, otherwise um, they wouldn't sell it to me. So I bought another one and had uh, Jesse Streeter send the core over. And I also bought a stock downpipe because I knew that was a restriction. Finding one of those halfway power pipes were like nearly impossible. So why not get a custom made solution locally? Those things cost me $610. I then started to do some maintenance on the car. I didn't know the situation. So, you know, you got to do all the oil change, all the fluid changes, everything when you first get the car. So I spent about $60 on transmission and differential fluid. I contacted a bunch of shops and I started getting work done and winter came. So I needed to trailer the car back and forth a few times. I paid $134 for trailer fees. I rented a trailer three times, three different trailers. <laughs> I started buying more things. I bought a Cara brochure. I bought four control arms because in case I need to replace the ball joints or whatever, uh, they were still good, so I still have them. I bought a clutch cable, accelerator cable, and a speedometer cable set. I also bought the little Cara, the thin manual. There's a thin one and a thick one. I've been hunting for a thick one recently, but I only got a thin one. And I bought a Lamco three hole meter panel. It's like a gauge pod thing, but it's like three meters together. All of that stuff cost me $778. Next, K-Sport USA in, I believe, Michigan. They started working on a cappuccino uh, plug and play unit for the ECU. So you can have a tunable ECU where it's similar to like where you could buy the, the old N1 computers and like the N2s, but this one's tunable because it's a mega squirt platform. Uh, I bought that with number eight spark plugs. That cost me $825. I was thinking about doing something with a steering column I'm not sure what's gonna come out of it yet, but I wanted an extra one. They come up all the time. I don't wanna take one out of my car because then I can't use it. So I bought another one that cost $139. If you haven't figured it out yet, I'm a frequent visitor of the Yahoo auction site in Japan. Uh, I'm there every morning. It's like literally my routine where I like to browse what's there. Kind of like how the whole cars and bids thing happened where I started looking. And the problem is I end up buying stuff. So. I saw a set of transmission internals, like they were nearly brand new. Um, I think the listing said it was a few hundred miles when they took that apart and then they kept it as spares. I ended up buying that set of stuff along with uh, some old valve covers with the camshafts for the dual overhead cam F6A. Uh, I bought a new AC dryer tank. Uh, I bought some blank mirror plates. like. It, instead of having a mirror stick out, it's like a triangle that's just a blank plate. I bought all that stuff for $894. Now that is a bargain just to end up with all of the internals for the transmission if I ever needed it, you know, like that. Without the housing, I have everything that's inside. To keep the rubber trim and the door seals kind of like healthy, I bought some of this fancy uh, silicone grease. Uh, I think Honda makes it and that was $20. By this time, I have sent my car to the dyno three times. I wanted to know what the stock run was. I wanted to know how the car behaved with the new downpipe I had developed, I call originality, the straight version and the catalyst version. And then I had the N1 computer put in and I upped the boost to 1.1 bar and I wanted to see what that was like. That cost me $464. It's been over a year and my interior was completely torn apart and I was kind of discouraged because I wasn't doing very well with the welding. I did it, I wasn't happy with it, but I frequently watch Rich Rebuilds. 
He's one of my favorite YouTubers and I understood he was local. I contacted them about my plight and they were willing to help out. So um, we met up and they helped me fix my floor. This was huge. So I ended up buying Small some tool. more undercoating to, to continue on their job. Hey, 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 hey. Our customer's here. They already did the bottom, like the, the entire floor pan, but not nothing else. So that cost me $19. I then started looking into other things I needed. I also needed a clutch cover. I needed all the bearings. The, I wanted some new bolts. I got some distributor caps, the, the kit. So I got the rotor and stuff. Um, I got the throw out bearing to have extra. I got some crank flywheel seals and bolts. I got the clutch cable pin like nut thing. That cost me $486. I then met an upholsterer that was able to match my fabric. Every one of these cars you'll see, if they haven't modified the seats, it's highly likely that you'll see that the seats are blue with the red or blue insert. But the seats would be not like this blue, but more like denim jeans just because of that pattern too. I got that reupholstered with matching fabric. I don't know if the color is matching because I've never seen what it is, but it's charcoal and it looks like it's proper. I got that redone for six. Oh, that was a special price. I can't say that. Hmm. Sorry. <laughs> to install my gauges and my boost controller and stuff, I needed to drill a hole in my firewall. Is it the firewall? It's in the back. I don't know, whatever. I drilled a hole where the ECU panel is and I had to make it big enough to, to get stuff through. I had to buy step drills for this. That cost me $25. I also had to buy a wire loom to protect all that stuff. That was $20. I ended up buying LED bulbs. Um, I'm definitely missing something from this list because I think I paid $50 for the headlights and then like various bulbs, but let's call everything $60 for the LED head bulbs. I had to buy some hoses and clamps for all the boost stuff I'm doing. That cost me $37. I then got a AZ-1 turbo coolant hard line. Uh, if you're looking at the turbo on the AZ-1, the turbo lines, the coolant lines both go to the left. On a cappuccino, I believe one goes up and one goes down, something like that. So. I don't see why that really matters because it's a soft hose anyways, but I bought an extra one of those uh, in case I needed it, in case like mine rots away or something, at least I'll have a spare to at least kind of match and maybe custom make. That cost $49. I picked up an OEM fuel filter, the driver side drive shaft, an exity clutch cover and uh, bearing. I picked up trunk hinges. These are a big deal because people damage them all the time by accident because they close it with the prop open so they get mangled and twisted. They rust because they're steel and like the rest of the car it would rot away and then you know your hinges don't work. So I've actually bought these as a prototype to, to use to figure out what I could do with them without removing the one in my car. I'm working on making a thicker aluminum version so it doesn't wobble so much and quick disconnects on the pivot point. The stock ones are like a rivet, it's permanently fixed. You have to unbolt the hinges to get it, like your trunk off and then you get all that fun to realign your trunk when you put it back on. So with the quick disconnect like hinge, you should be able to just pop it back in and everything would be in alignment and it'll be super easy. I then found both drive shafts. So now I have two right drive shafts. I bought a left drive shaft and a right drive shaft or passenger and driver side. I bought the timing belt water pump kit. The yen was much weaker now and I could like justify buying the combination switch because mine is faded where it's like white on top and you know, a new one would look nice. I haven't installed it yet, of course. I then bought more clips, like just broken interior clips. The plastic gets brittle, it is what it is. I bought the inner door seal because in case mine were actually too flat and they were leaking because I had some water come in during a car wash. I also got a door handle, like the cup set. And I also found uh, brand new window cranks. I bought all that stuff. It cost me $1,170. Looking at my windshield washer fluid tank, it's seen better days. I wanted a new one in case it broke or maybe the pump died or something. So I saw one for sale. They sold them new. I bought that one. I also saw an N1 computer for EA 11R cappuccino and I bought that. I think I paid way too much for it. But then again, I've never seen another one for sale since. So maybe it was okay. I don't know. I paid $1,497. I think I'm starting to run out of things to buy. So I started buying literature. Bought all these magazines, I bought brochures, I brought models and stuff, little, little toy models, and uh, I 
picked up a whole bunch of those. I bought the clips for the hood props. I bought another windshield trim because I had to send one over to Jason because he was gracious enough in Florida to go over to the windshield place to get his windshield scanned and molded or whatever they did to it. And they ended up damaging the uh, windshield trim. So I offered up a new windshield trim. I also saw one of these new old stock instrument cluster dash cover things. And everyone seems to have like a cracked or ruined one or something. It just seems to be a very common thing. Um, I figured mine's probably brittle. If I ever have to remove it, I might break some tabs and I wanted to have this as a spare. I also bought a set of intake and exhaust valves. I got the little rubber nub that keeps the gas door cap real tight. Uh, mine crumbled, it's just old rubber. I also bought a radiator cap just to have as a spare. That cost me $1,206. One morning I saw a four piece brace kit that someone was selling and it was the front strut tower bar. The, it was like an under brace somewhere. I, I think it goes like between the, the two control arms or something. Uh, there was like a triangular brace that goes behind the seats. But the real gem I wanted was the Mazda Speed version of the, uh, the rear strut tower with the two things. And um, that went for really cheap. I thought I was gonna have to pay more money for that. I also picked up an A-pillar trim. That cost me $444. I then started buying more literature. I also picked up the stock steering wheel because I wanted to see more of my gauges. The Momo race optional wheel I had was blocking about half of it out and it was kind of annoying. It wasn't required, but it was nice to have like visibility of everything, even though I don't, it doesn't really matter. I just wanted to see. There was also this rare AZ-1 center pouch. It kind of just goes in the, between the seats right here for you to have a little stuff because there's no storage pockets in this car. Um, I don't know what I was thinking. I imagine this thing to be much bigger, <laughs> but at this moment, I had all the brochures that showed me exactly what this was and I was still stupid enough to buy this, but I bought this. Um, I kind of want one. It's probably easy to remake and I'll just have mine say Suzuki or Kara or something. And then, I don't know, maybe somebody can buy this from me. I also got models. I'm trying to build like a little display area in my garage just specifically for this car and all the literature that would go there. It's kind of like a shrine. I bought some original lug nuts. I got the OEM radio. I found an OEM radio, just like the ones in all the brochures. That was amazing and I got it for really cheap too. And finally, I'm not overpaying for stuff. I'm excited to get that in there because my radio is stupid. Check this out. I also bought some anniversary decals that somebody listed. I, you know, I just wanted them just to have. It kind of goes with the entire collection. It was just the 30th anniversary in uh, Hiroshima out in Mazda HQ. They had a whole event uh, about well, almost two months ago now. And all of this cost me $1,382. At this point, after paying so much money for all this stuff, uh, what's another few hundred dollars? <laughs> so I kind of wanted the, the look of the Mazda Speed Hood because it has a little bump. Kind of makes the car look a little bit more aggressive. So I see this as the happy car. And then when I actually get this whole thing repainted, I'll also get my Mazda Speed Hood I just picked up. I'll also get that painted and maybe I'll figure out some quick release latches and I can quickly swap between the hoods. Uh, that way I can have a happy car and an angry car mm, just because, why not? Getting just the hood cost me $872. Of course, doing the whole downpipe thing, I had to buy my own downpipe and I had to get like the R&D work done. Um, yes, I'm selling the pipes. Eventually I'll get my money back, but it doesn't really matter at this point. I'm just getting parts just because like, like if I custom made the part and I paid like five grand for the work, I, I don't know. I don't know what I would have been charged. Obviously doing group buys would be able to spread the cost across everybody and it would just make the product a little bit cheaper. It still ended up being more expensive than I hoped. So for my portion of the downpipe, I paid $1,042. Jumping into more custom parts because things are hard to get, things don't exist, things are discontinued, whatever. I wanted an LSD differential. Those are expensive. I also have a friend that drifts and you know, I got to like sit in his car, try it out. And uh, he kind of explained to me some of the downsides of having the LSD for like street driving. I tend to be on the street more than track. I do want to track the car, but you know, not all the time. So a uh, wave track differential would serve a very similar purpose and it'll be a lot more livable when you're on the street. That cost me $1,400. Also available for sale at $1,400 each. This is a one-time kind of build. Uh, I will, the, the, the minimum quantity of this thing is too high. And of course the initial like cash investment on this thing is ridiculous. So 
once I sell out of these, there's no more wave track differentials unless for some reason we can buy over 20 of them again. Because I want to track my car and the temp issues, my car runs a little bit on the spicy side according to my oil and the temp gauge in the summertime and I'm just driving down the highway going like 70 miles per hour. So I bought the upgraded Navic radiator. That cost me $726. I had to buy my three auto meter gauges. I bought the fancy stack stepper motor gauges. They're all electronic so that way I don't have like oil in the car and whatever. So that cost me $631. I also picked up an HKS EVC three, four? That cost me $205. I also got an HKS 10th gen turbo timer because my car likes to be spicy. At least this way I can like turn the car off and just go away and the car will just run until the time runs out. That cost me $138 with the adapter harness for a Mazda. That is my two years of purchases. Uh, let's add this up and we can see how much everything actually cost. While I was editing, I realized I missed a few things that I spent money on. I bought another set of those screws from Andy at Ultimark, except this time I got the black stainless. It's got like a process that makes it black and you can see it's kind of all over the bag. That cost $118. Next was this uh, shifter boot here with the handbrake boot. This cost me $71. And finally the SGS door struts coupled with the Lift Support Depot hardware. I believe I paid $135 for everything for all four of these. All right. Two years into this madness, I spent $29,909. Probably a little bit more, but if I've lost it, whatever. These are the big major things that are obvious. Um, of course, there's probably some other stuff. But as you can see, there's plenty more money to spend, plenty more content to come. This was a really long video, but it covers a two-year progression of me buying all kinds of stuff for my Suzuki Kara. Please subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Comment on uh, what a crazy nut I am buying all this stuff. I could have bought a whole nother car with the money I spent, but um, Sometimes I think about it, I probably should have bought another car because then I have complete spare of everything. <laughs> I'll see you next time.